Right then, the parking meter. Now for some of you, this is already happening and for some of you, this is coming. What am I talking about? Well, check out these numbers here. You see this? This is the tariff. This is what you pay, right? Well, soon this won't mean a thing. Why? Because yet another London Council has just introduced emissions-based parking. So this is based on apparently how polluting your car is. That's how much you will pay. What am I talking about? I'll explain everything after this. A brown car guy. Brown car guy. So here we are, just another regular high road where people are parking and shopping and doing all the rest of it. And when they park, they go to the machine or they use their app and they pay for their parking. But that is gonna get even more trickier going forward. This news out just a couple of days ago is that emissions-based parking is basically coming to all of us and it's already coming to quite a few London councils. So Lambeth is the latest council in London to introduce emissions-based parking fees. Now, these new charges are based on a vehicle's CO2 emission. So basically, this is the same technique for which they use, or well, this is the same method of measurement that they use, for example, when they're looking at what was formerly called road tax, and these days is referred to as VED, which is vehicle excise duty. So that's basically the annual tax that you pay. As most of you will know, that's based on the CO2 emissions of your vehicle. But in this case, with the parking, not only is it based on that, but then they also add a diesel surcharge. So basically, if your car is not uh, a Euro 6 compliant diesel, uh, then you will pay an additional surcharge on top of that as well. So this is where then not just, uh, not just based on uh, road tax or VED, but then it also then strays into the realm of ULES because of course ULES is based on Euro 6 for diesel and Euro 4 for petrol. It's emission based charging, but not on CO2 emissions. It's based on NOx and on particulate emissions so according to press reports owners of the most polluting cars i should put quote marks around most polluting but anyway owners of the most polluting cars can expect to pay more than twice as much as cleaner cars the cost of a parking bay near waterloo station in south london now ranges get this from six pound 30 to 13 pound 23 an hour and payment is made by an app so basically that you use the app to make the payment and because you're using the app so you don't use these machines because with these machines you just put in it wherever many coins you have or pay with a credit card and you'll pay the amount that it says on on the board there as i showed you but with an app when you put your number plate in the app will immediately know what car you've got will know where it sits in that uh, ved band and then will charge you accordingly it will also know if you're driving a diesel car and how old that diesel car is. So, yeah, in fact, it gets so complicated, in fact, that there's 26 different charges just to park for one hour in Lambeth, depending, of course, like I said, on your car's tax ban and on the, whether or not it's subject to a diesel surcharge. Now, they did do, Lambeth Council did do a consultation on this, um, and there were 2,900 responses in this consultation and 59% of people said they don't want to do this. They don't like it. They don't want it. So what did Lambert Council do? Well, they implemented the changes anyway uh, because they stated that air quality is a major public health issue. Um, and in fact, of course, they're not alone. Uh, a load of London Borough Councils, including Lewisham, Merton, Newham, uh, Croydon, I've already introduced emission-based charging. I think Camden also comes into that. Somebody please confirm. Um, and then what they're saying that, of course, now that they've started to roll out these things, this is the thing, it's like, before you know it, they roll these things out and a lot of people are like, oh, well, it doesn't affect me. It's over there or it's over there or it's in London or whatever. But sure enough, it then starts to get rolled out everywhere. And the, the report says the councils across England are expected to roll out these new charges. Now, how did Lambeth Council justify this? Lambeth Council states, uh, a or cites a 2021 review by Imperial College, good old Imperial College, best buddies of our mate, London Mayor Sadiq Khan, that show that air pollution kills over 4,000 people in London every year. Of course, this is the figure that Sadiq Khan loves to use, and as we've discussed in previous videos and widely everywhere else, that 
the 4,000 debt figure is not really a real figure at all. It is purely based on extrapolated, uh, estimated and calculated end of life expectancy in years totaled up to equate to a possible extrapolated and estimated, as I said, 4,000 lives. So it isn't actually a real number at all. And they also further cite uh, 2018 calculations from Oxford University showing there's a cost of around 605 million pounds to the national health caused by pollution from motor vehicles as a means of justifying these measures. Now, first of all, how can they prove that when, in fact, all of the data, all of the scientific reports, even that one single coroner's death report on a death that was attributed to uh, air pollution, none of those uh, clearly um, and, and, and without any doubt indicate uh, a direct link to pollution from motor vehicles. None of them say that. And the other day I did this video on asthma, you may have seen it. And even in that, there were, when pollution was cited as a cause, um, air, road traffic pollution was not cited as a cause, just air pollution in general. So I don't see how, first of all, that they can say that. And even if they are saying that, where it's costing the NHS 605 million pounds, the reality is that, well, you say it costs uh, air, uh, sorry, not air, but road, air, oh, air traffic, that's an, air traffic pollution, that's an entirely different story. Let's not get into that right now. But road traffic pollution, you're saying causes this much. What I would say, um, you know, in, uh, as, as a riposte to that is, well, how much contribution have cars or road traffic made to saving lives when you think of the emergency services when you think of uh, police fire rescue ambulance how many lives have they saved how many babies have been born because cars have rushed mothers to hospitals how many people have earned a livelihood from cars how many people have found mental benefits from socializing from you know going uh, on staycations or going for a drive or you know going for a day out or a weekend away all of that are benefits that have come from owning a car and from people having cars. Have you put a number on that yet? Because if somebody can put a number on that and tell me that that's worth less than 605 million, then I might be like, oh, okay. But as far as I'm concerned, no. And of course, then it's not just even that. You've got to add other numbers on top of that. You've got to add the cost to businesses. And we already know that how, how beneficial road traffic is, not just to benefit to businesses, but how it benefits us getting stuff. More and more of us are ordering stuff online. That gets delivered to us by, hey, road transport. There's no drones up in the air yet. They may come, but not yet. And of course, you know, deliveries and groceries and shopping and all the rest of it, it all comes by road transport. Has anybody worked out the financial value of that? Um, and then the other thing to say is about this is based on CO2. And they're talking about public health issues, right? Well, CO2 is not the contributing factor or not the main contributing factor to public health. That, of course, as Euless has told us, or as Euless keeps telling us, is NOx and particulate emissions. So nitrogen oxide and particulate emissions. And that doesn't come under those VED bands. Of course, it does come into when you talk about the Euro 6 uh, diesel surcharge. That kind of impacts that, but otherwise it's not. But here's the thing. Sadly, I'm not next to a parked car. I was hoping I would be at a near a parked car at this point. But what I wanted to illustrate, and you've all seen a parked car, I'm assuming. But what I wanted to illustrate is like, it's bad enough that we're having to pay additional amounts uh, in road tax, IEVD, and all the other charges, including in this case, ULEs and congestion charging that's being foisted upon us. But then you're saying they're going to charge more for a parked car. And I'm sorry, but excuse me, a parked car for 99.9% .9 of its time let's say 0.999% of its time, is not running. It's not running, so therefore it's not actually emitting anything. So how can you justify penalizing it? I mean, the amount of, and also there's no particular emissions either. It's not using its tires, it's not using its brakes, it's not running its engine. So even if you said EV, it, 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 there's nothing. It's static, the car is parked, it's not doing anything. It's taking up the same amount of space as any other car. So there can be no justification for charging additional on that car. It doesn't make sense. If you're saying it's a deterrent or whatever, well, you're already charging people more for entering into the zone. You're already charging people more for owning and running the car. If it's a car with a high CO2 thing, most likely you're probably also paying more for insurance. You're probably paying more for fuel and fuel. There's tax on that. Don't forget. So you're already paying so much for that car. And on top of that, they're like, oh, well, you know what? You can pay for parking as well more than everybody else. And the thing is, the problem with this is 
I think that well, because they've just programmed this into us that if you have a car with a bigger engine uh, and therefore higher CO2 output, then they, I think that they've programmed us with this notion uh, or this belief that, well, we just have to pay more. That's it. We just we just sort of reconciled ourselves. So once they've re once they've conditioned our thinking into this sort of uh, approach, it means that they can just keep piling on the cost because nobody's saying, "Oh, now wait a minute," oh, well, except me. But nobody's saying that because we're just accepting it. And I think this is the problem. We've got to start to stand up and say, "Wait a minute." You pay more for parking. Why? The car isn't doing anything more than any other car. It's not emitting anything because it's parked and it's most likely switched off. It's a complete and utter nonsense. But anyway, they think that this will make us jump, stop using cars and walk and use a cycle. There's a guy who just went by on a bicycle. I'm not cycling. I'm sorry, I'm not getting on a cycle at this age. And as for walking, I do a fair bit of walking, but there's a limit to how far I'm going to walk. You know, I don't use a car all the time, to be honest. I, I don't use it when I don't need to. But you've got to be realistic about these things. So I think that's an absurdity. This notion, especially with a lot of people that comment on these things, they have this notion. It's like, well, if there were no cars, everybody would walk and use bicycles. No. You know what would happen? Everybody would stay home and just order more stuff. And how would that stuff get there? By road transport. Think about that. Listen, guys, this is completely and utterly crazy. We need to... Eulis is just one part of this conundrum. There's all these other aspects from 15 minute cities, LTNs, um, increasing our taxes on our fuel, and now charging us more for just about everything. This is getting crazy, and we really need to make a stand on these things. Anyway, please like, share, comment, most of all, share, and let everybody know what's going on. Brown card Hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please, please hit the like button and share this video as well if you can. And while you're at it, check out these guys who also sponsor my content. I am deeply grateful to them because it helps me to buy new equipment, put fuel in the cars, and yes, buy a cup of coffee. You can do the same. Just go here or right here on YouTube. Just hit these three little dots down here and click on thanks. Make sure you're signed in first. My content is free. But this is how you can help me keep it that way. I may even send you a gift. Oh, by the way, watch this next.